In human civilization, there are universal standards of decency. There are things you simply don't do. And one of those involves respect for the dead. The reason for this is quite simple. When someone's died, then their family and loved ones are grieving. They are vulnerable, fragile. And if you're any sort of decent, moral, compassionate human being, you respect that. You don't take the opportunity to gloat, to rub their faces in it, to be overtly abusive, because that would be utterly despicable. It's interesting, then, that this compact is repeatedly broken by those who are adamant that they are the most virtuous, considerate and compassionate of us all. The woke left. Every time someone they find remotely disagreeable dies, they indulge themselves in an orgy of the most despicable behaviour imaginable. They did it with Margaret Thatcher, they did it with Rush Limbaugh, and they did it with Prince Philip too. There's a man who actually fought against Nazis, and the woke left abused him as an, um, Nazi. Because these people aren't just repugnant, they're fucking idiots as well. Grossly stupid, deeply ignorant, narrow-minded, self-obsessed, arrogant and sneering bigots who behave with repulsive disdain to anyone outside their incestuous and ridiculous cult. They are the most tribal, most unpleasant people on planet Earth, challenged only by the adherence of fundamental Islam in their close-minded arrogance, an utter revulsion for anyone who differs from them. Now, as I speak, this nauseating cult is at it yet again, pouring bile and scorn on Queen Elizabeth II as she lay dying. The Queen, a respected figure, noted for decades of duty, dignity, decency and restraint, is an unlikely figure for such invective. But when you're motivated by bigotry rather than reason, such considerations are irrelevant. I'd like to shine a little light on one case study who stood out among the avalanche of invectives screamed out by the cultists of the woke left. Uju Anya is a black woman of Nigerian descent who was educated at the University of California, Los Angeles and Brown University. She describes herself as a lesbian and is now a tenured professor at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As such, She's an enormously privileged woman who enjoys a lavishly upper-middle-class existence. Yet, like so many of her ilk, she continually whines about some supposed victimhood. Now, as a professor, Anya has a duty of responsibility to her students to set an example on how to behave. I suggest that may mean showing a modicum of decorum, decency and civility rather than screaming petulant abuse like some maladjusted adolescent. But naturally, Uju took the latter course. Even as Queen Elizabeth lay dying, she took to Twitter to scream, I heard the chief monarch of a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. Now, we all know that right-leaning figures get constantly banned from Twitter simply for posting reasonable views they disagree with, while left-leaning figures can threaten violence and death with impunity. I've made numerous films on this, and Twitter proved it yet again, because Uju wasn't banned, wasn't even suspended. She's still free to post as much bile as she likes. So it's instructive at this point to do a little comparison to compare the sort of people Twitter bans to the sort of people they welcome. Because here's how Twitter's most famous victim responded to the Queen's death. Donald Trump issued a beautiful and respectful statement. He wrote how he and his wife would never forget Her Majesty's generous friendship, great wisdom and wonderful sense of humour. What a grand and beautiful lady she was. There was nobody like her. Our thoughts and prayers remain with the great people of the United Kingdom as you honour her most meaningful life and exceptional service to the people. Now, that's how you're supposed to respond when someone dies. 
and that's what Twitter bans, while protecting the most vile abusers imaginable. I'm not pretending Donald Trump's perfect by any means, but he's certainly a much better human being than a considerable slice of the scumbags who still pollute Twitter. Now, back to Uju. There was quite a bit of pushback to her vile tweet. So did she back down? Did she apologise? <laughs> did she, heck? She tweeted again, because she wasn't suspended, remember? If anyone expects me to express anything but disdain for the monarch who supervised a government that sponsored the genocide that massacred and displaced half my family, and the consequences of which those alive today are still trying to overcome, you can keep wishing upon a star. Now, there's quite a lot there to unpack. Nigeria had been one of the main routes of the slave trade, but it was Britain that banned that trade, freeing countless Nigerians from that yoke. When the nation started to come under British dominion, it was in 1851, when they helped locals to overthrow Oba Kazoko, because he was still engaged in illegal slavery. The British helped to instill Oba Akatoye, a popular local, and they greatly improved the stability and prosperity of the region. It wasn't all sunshine and roses, of course. While Britain improved Nigeria's infrastructure, they extracted wealth too, and became embroiled in some nasty local conflicts. In the early 20th century, the British launched a full-scale invasion of the Sokoto Caliphate. But after World War I, just over 30 years after first making claim to the region, the British began supporting and mobilising for full Nigerian independence. There was no genocide, and Nigeria effectively became independent in 1954, the very year after Queen Elizabeth's coronation. It's also worth pointing out that the British monarchy has had no real power to interfere in such affairs since the Bill of Rights in 1689, and certainly following the demise of the King's Party after 1776. There's a lot of nuance there then though that's entirely missing from Ujuanya's tweet. But it gets worse, because when pressed, she admitted that her family had actually been displaced and attacked in the Nigerian Civil War of 1967 to 1970. That happened years after the British had left. How they, never mind the Queen, can be blamed for that is unfathomable. Nigerians killed my family. So it's the fault of white people? <laughs> Amazing. And how's Nigeria fared since? Well, in the 1980s, the Booker Prize winning author, Ben Okri, wrote a number of articles lampooning the rigged elections in Nigeria. He was placed on a death list and was advised to leave the country the next morning. And in the 1990s, after protesting about the environmental destruction caused by drilling for oil in Nigeria, Ken Sarowiwa was hanged. And he makes no mention of incidents like these. And you wonder how much academic freedom she'd be given in Nigeria, as opposed to in the supposedly racist nation she derides. Given such inconsistencies, it may not surprise you to learn that, like virtually everyone who shares her simplistic and divisive perception of European colonialism, Uju is not a historian. So why does she feel entitled to propound on a subject she's never studied? Well, Uju, you may be unsurprised to learn, is a professor in critical discourse studies, primarily examining race, gender, sexual and social class identities in new language learning through the experiences of African-American students. And of course she is. Now, critical theory sounds impressive, doesn't it? It sounds like they're teaching critical thinking, and many people who know nothing at all about this field assume that they do. In fact, the aim of critical thinking is to erode the institutions of Western civilization by constantly criticising them. It's not an academic pursuit at all. It's pure activism, because it begins with its conclusions and then simply seeks evidence to support those conclusions. It doesn't allow for questioning, or for other interpretation. There's no true investigation or open-minded discourse. 
How do you think a gender studies professor would respond if a student argued that there was nothing wrong with a woman assuming the traditional role of wife, mother and homemaker if she wanted to? That while other alternatives are viable, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with a life spent raising children, baking bread and helping to make a comfortable environment for one's family. Not kindly, I'd suggest. She'd likely be screamed at that that role's just a social construct of the white, male, patriarchal, heteronormative tyranny that's blah, blah, blah. This is why Uju is incapable of viewing colonial history with any objectivity, balance or nuance. She's just a very characteristic type. A demagogue. A racist. A close-minded bully. An activist who sounds off on subjects she knows nothing about. An arrogant little tyrant who brooks no dissent or questioning. Who's incapable of acting or responding with any civility or decency to any inquiry. And she, and countless others like her, are responsible for shaping our broader culture and educating our children. God help us all. If you'd like to support this channel, please like, subscribe and think about buying my books. They're called The Tyranny of the Left and they're available on the links below. They go into topics like this in much greater detail. Please do feel free to pick them up and let me know what you think. Thank you.